basement of La Penta. This is WICR. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Sports Fall. And this is the part of the show that I was kind of uh, not waiting to get to, but we have to get to it. And obviously, if you're a New York Giants fan, last night it it was as difficult and as gut-wrenching a defeat as you could imagine. Especially, I think, when you look at that game, there were so many positives you could take away from the Giants side. I really do. I mean, I think when you look at how, how they played in that game, especially on the defensive side, I think the biggest thing that you saw there is situational football. Great situational football. Steve Spagnuolo, I mean, you really felt like they had a great game plan and they executed it well. Obviously, they had a lot of trouble getting to Tony Romo and really that was a big problem in the game. They just couldn't hit him. But, I mean, that is that is the probably arguably the best offensive line in football that the Dallas Cowboys had. Getting to him is never an easy task, but I think at the end of the day they did a very good job getting those turnovers, especially with people being in the right place at the right time. That is hard to teach. That's instinct football, situational football, and that's something that I think you clearly saw from the Giants. And then you look at the offensive side as well. I think one of the biggest things that they were missing last year was that third down back who could really be dependable, could be a pass catcher if they needed him to, could block when they needed him to. Shane Vereen, you saw, it didn't really play a ton at the beginning, but they did utilize him later in that game, and he did have an impact. Rashad Jennings, again, he ran the ball, and he ran the ball. He had some very big runs at the end of the game. But, of course, the only one that kind of takes away from it all is the end of the game, the third in the third down on on the goal line, and then the Giants, of course, uh, decide not to run the ball there. And look, Tom Coughlin put the loss on him. Eli Manning put the bl- loss on him. I don't think it's one of those things where you could put the loss on one person. I just think it, collectively, it, look, it was the wrong decision. You, you have to run the ball there. There's no question about it. Um, it, it's, just, it it's a difficult situation because... You could take so many good things away from that game. I really feel like you could. Because this is a Giants team that's got got a lot of injuries on that defensive side. There really are. I mean, Jason Pierre-Paul is as big a piece, missing piece, as you could imagine. Uh, you have so many new pieces in that secondary there. I mean, you, I thought Landon Collins, who's a guy uh, in that secondary, who's going to have a huge, a huge role this year, played very, very well. Um, again, very active around the football. Um, I did think... That that Cromart, that Rogers Cromartie played a good. I mean, I think collectively you could look at a lot of those guys on the defensive side and really pick out plays and show them up on a screen and say that's good football, that's good tackling. The only times you felt like the Giants got into trouble on the defensive side is later in that game when they go to the prevent defense. Now. I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to look. Defensive coordinators in the NFL, they know a whole lot more about the game than I do, but I've just seen too many times teams go to the prevent defense and then it just doesn't work. It really doesn't. You make the field so much easier to navigate, and especially when you're a team like the Cowboys who really like to dink and dunk the ball with those little playmakers like Beasley and those little running backs that they have. That's something that's going to kill you. And we saw both times at the end of the game how quick. Quickly, Dallas was able to get right down there and score. It was happened at the end with one minute and 41 seconds left on the clock. Obviously, it's a different game if the Giants run the ball there. But, I mean, Eli said, look, I had to take the sack there. Never should have thrown the ball. Um, and then, again, on Coughlin's side, look, it should have been a run play. And that's the disappointing part. But, I mean, you really feel like, look, I think when you, you just got to move ahead. You've got... Falcons in your place at MetLife this Sunday. I will be there covering that game. Um, And then you have the Redskins. Again, I will be there for all the Giant home games. So I'll be there for both of those on the ground inside. We'll give you all the information that I can. Um, But I think those are two very winnable games. And if I'm the Giants and I have to start my season on the road against the Cowboys and I'm a team that there's a lot of question marks for um, with some of the play in the preseason and some of the injuries that I have, I still think, I know how gut-wrenching this loss is, but I think you can walk away with a lot of positives here. There really are. Clearly, if anything, this is the wake-up call and the perfect wake-up call this week one. You that you've got to tighten it up, especially the clock management. You've got to tighten it up, and I think 
Sometimes it happens in football. We, we saw it in the Super Bowl with Pete Carroll. It, it hurts the heart more than anything when you lose a game like that. But that's just the game sometimes. That's why it's so cruel. That's why it's so great. Sometimes the game is just cr- incredibly cruel like that. But at the end of the day, the, the, the wrong decision was made. They will clean it up. It will be addressed. There's not a question about it. If they're in that situation again, I don't think there's any question about it. Um, but you just got to move ahead. You've got Atlanta. You've got Washington, both very winnable games. And, and I think the biggest confidence booster is from the defensive side because that I, I really felt like a lot of people, including myself, thought this, this Giants offense was going to look pretty good this year. Uh, I think Odell Beckham Jr., obviously, you saw some of those plays he made last night. Incredible, as always. The running attack is something that I really like. I like Rashad Jennings with Andre Williams. And then finally, you have a third down guy, a little receiving type guy, like a Shane Vereen, who I think we saw made an impact last night in that game. Then you look to the when I mean, Victor Cruz is still will be back, but there's good stuff there. The one thing offensively I think that frustrated a lot of fans was how consistently Eli targeted Preston Parker on those important third downs. Now, Preston Parker had a couple balls that just he should have caught. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you've got to go to your best guy on third down, on those crucial downs. There's a reason why Tony Romo's always going to Jason Witten on those third downs. Uh, in the most important plays, I think in that game, you had to go to Odell Beckham Jr. There was a third down, I think it was on the last drive uh, that the Giants had the ball, where Eli did go to Odell Beckham Jr., and that's what you've got to do now. They did send him through the middle a lot, and, and I don't think that that's not a smart decision to do. I think Odell is way too important to this offense, and just he works at his best when he's outside. Sending a guy like him with his, of his skill set and of, of his uh, ability, I just don't think is smart over the middle. Uh, I think for a guy of his size, clearly he works better on the outside. You've got tight ends for a reason. You've got to send them up the middle. It just doesn't make sense risking a, an injury with a guy like Odell as important as he is. Um, but again, there are positives you can take away from this game. Clearly, it is it just it is gut wrenching a loss, as I said before. But again, you know that they're going to it's going to be cleaned up. I don't I don't I think it's a it's a learning experience for everyone there. Um, and you've just got to move on. Atlanta, Washington are the next two steps. You get two wins there, and we look at Dallas for a minute because. That I don't think that was look for, for what Dallas did last year and how electric they were. I think a lot of people thought they could have come in out and it could have been a much more dominant win. But the Giants were there every step of the way, should have won the game. And now Des Bryant is going to be out for some time with a broken foot. That is a big loss for them. I mean, anytime you lose a player of his caliber, clearly that's a loss. But I think especially without without Demarco Murray, who was such an important part of that offense last year. They're going to be really need to switch to more of a pass oriented offense. Now you lose the best offensive playmaker that you have on your unit. Uh, th- that is that is a question mark there. It really is. And I think also when you look at what you have there at running back now, now clearly Darren McFadden, I think, is a guy we've never doubted his potential. But again, that's a guy who's always had trouble staying healthy. So the Cowboys as well walk out of this one with a win. But Des Bryant's injury could be significant for that amount of time that he's out, especially with the way that we've seen that offense. And I think... A lot of defenses are going to look at this at this tape that play the Cowboys of the Giants defense and how they played it, and I think they're really going to take a lot of things because, again, the Giants did, defense did a lot of good things in this game. They gave them a lot of trouble. The two times the Giants defense got into trouble again was that prevent defense. I just It always drives me crazy when I see it because I just don't think at the end of the day it works. Again, I'm not saying I'm smarter than these defensive coordinators in the NFL, but just you can't show me a lot of evidence that the prevent defense really prevents anything. I think a lot of people, you've heard quotes, the only thing the prevent defense does is prevent you from winning. And I've surely seen enough of that to really make me doubt it. But if you had to boil it all down into a nutshell, you can take a lot of good things away from this game. It, it's incredibly painful right now. 
but you got to move forward. Two winnable games next. Clearly, we will see in, in monitor practice and everything else this week, but I think it, it's not the worst situation to be in. Uh, I think clearly there's good to take away, and then you've just got to move forward. But as the Giants will move forward, we will move forward as well, going into more of this incredibly opening uh, week one. It was good stuff. Going to move forward, so don't go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs> 